Hey guys, so yeah, I'm just getting ready to go out. Um, this day I've got to go to um, the council offices to sort out my bus pass and to inquire about um, management management transfers or management moves um, and get a bit more information on that because they don't have much information on their website about it and how to go about about getting one um so yeah because they have the info about um why you can get a transfer a management transfer um so if you feel unsafe in your home stuff like that if um and that would be if for medical reasons or because you're disabled and your home is not adequate for your disabilities or um, if you're elderly and can no longer manage stairs and stuff like that um, or if you're in danger from an abusive partner or abusive neighbours or you know if you're in danger of anything like that you know which is helpful information but they do not tell you how to go about doing that and what kind of information and paperwork you may need for that you know so i've got to inquire about that um but it is looking like a management transfer may not be possible because the police and the housing officer have contacted me and they've said even with the evidence I've provided, the recordings, videos and stuff, um, they have said they can't really do anything um, about it at this point because they've got no proof that he's aiming this hate and anger at me specifically um they said because we've not got video evidence of him in the video him in person in the video actively shouting at you we've just got a video videos of um him shouting in his flat we cannot see him we cannot see who he is shouting at so he could be shouting at his tv for all we know which i kind of understand i i get that um you know i get that i understand that but that doesn't help me but they said they're gonna keep an eye on the case and keep the case open so that if he does escalate then they can do something if he acts on any of these threats he's showing they can then take further action so in the meantime i'm just sat here worried and scared that any day he's gonna break down my door and attack me so <laughs> you know but because i'm thinking because the police can't take action the the council will see it the housing people will see it as well there's no police action being taken so it can't be that threatening so you're not entitled to a management transfer you know that's what i'm worried is going to happen so but we will see what happens today. Um, but in other news, I was going to give you some information on this video about the bus passes and things like that. Um, because originally I found it extremely difficult to get one of the concession bus passes. Um, usually they're, they're for elderly and disabled people um, 
I have the disabled person's bus pass, but mine is expired. Um, they also do the bus pass with a carer's pass on it as well. Um, and they're, they're like different. Each pass is a little bit different. They have different logos signaling which pass it is. Um, but yeah, originally I found it extremely difficult getting one of these bus passes because every time I went on their website, there was hardly any information about um, what you needed to get the bus pass um, or what made you entitled to a bus pass. Um, all they had was the form, online form to fill in. Um, so I went into the um, council office to inquire more about it. Each time I went in there, I was given different information and I was told that I was not entitled because I do not get high rate disability benefits. Um, so... I was like, right, okay, I'm not on high rate, so I can't get it. Um, but I was then told, well, actually, you can get it because you have a, um, what was called then the yellow card. It's no longer called the yellow card. Um, but I had a little disability card, registration card, at the time, regis which registered me um as physically disabled and sight impaired with the local authority with like social services and stuff like that so that if I needed to access any support it would be easier for me because I'd just show my yellow card and that would entitle me instantly um to the support um now it's a white card and they've changed all the rules around that so i'll see if i can give you a bit of info on that as well um but yeah so i was told if i had that yellow card i could get i was entitled to the bus pass so i took in my yellow card and showed that and said uh, i'm I need the bus pass and they said mm, yeah the yellow card does help a bit but you still also need um the high rate disability payments and you need a letter from your doctor so like i was hitting brick walls and then one day i went in there and I was like, look, what do I have to do to get this bus pass? Because I'm being told different information. And the lady there, because at this point I was in my wheelchair when I went in. Um, and this is just before I got awarded my PIP. Um, and she said, no, yeah, you can get it. And she said, you have the yellow card. So, yeah, you can get it. You don't need anything else. And she goes, let's fill in the form now. We'll take your photo and we'll get that sorted. And they sorted it that day. And about a week later, my bus pass came through the post. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, it, it with these kinds of things, you do get a ton of conflicting information. And they will always try and fob you off by going, oh, it's on the website. Go to the website. Um, and that... And, the website's just as bad. There's, there's, it, it's a minefield of different links you gotta to click to, to try and get to the information you need, and once you manage to get to that information you need, that information is lacking, and it does not help. So, and also if you have sight issues, um, in dis and learning disabilities and stuff like that, using the internet it is really difficult you know um i remember my my sister she's um blind and she has a worse time i think sometimes with me because she keeps getting fobbed off um she goes to speak to the people in person and they say i'll oh, go to the website 
and she said oh, i i can't use the website and they're like oh why why is that and she stood there holding her blind stick and she said well i'm blind oh well you can still use they're like, well, you just need to go on there and click this link, this link. And she goes, I cannot see the screen. I cannot see the links that I need to be clicking. This is why I need to speak to a human being, you know. So I understand how difficult it is. And I'm going to try and show you some bits that will help you. Firstly, I think to get the yellow card that is now no longer the yellow card, um, and I'll tell you a bit about the rules around that. And if I show you this card, I'm going to cover some of the sensitive information. Um, because, yeah, um, try and get this at an angle that is helpful. I don't know how well you can see that. But yeah, that is the um card it's a white card now um and it is southampton city council um and the nhs who work together and um southampton um southampton social services adult team or disability team um and you get that card by seeing these people um the Southampton Community Independent Service Sensory Services. Um, now, I think it's similar throughout Hampshire. There are these set up in different different areas. Um, so, if you if you live in a different area other than Southampton, just ring Adult Social Services and inquire about their sensory service team or their disability team um, and they should give you the information for that the number for that um, but yeah the sensory team basically help people who have sight loss or hearing loss um, so yeah they can give you all sorts of different support um, they can help acquire equipment that you may need in your home um to help you keep to help keep you independent living in your own home um you know they they can help you with a lot of things they've helped me quite a bit um they also have um like therapy assistance um you know they can get you in touch with the right people to get the right therapies the right treatments you know the right help and support they do a lot of good stuff um it was the southampton disability team that helped to get me my disabled access wet room shower um so yeah they can help you get the adaptions to your home that you may need as well um but yeah you get the white card from these people um, and they have a website and a phone number. I hope you can see that, their phone number there. Um, but yeah, I'll probably share that link on the Chronically Suki Facebook page, link to their website and their phone number and everything because they are very helpful and they will get you that white card. The problem with it is when it used to be the yellow card system, um, it used to be they dealt with disability as a whole. So they dealt with physical disabilities, learning disabilities, um, and sensory disabilities such as sight loss and, and whatnot. Um, but now, they've broke that down and it's all separate um so whereas before i had the yellow card that said i was physically disabled and had sight loss now i just have the sight loss one um which i've probably got to get changed because my sight has got worse because this one says sight impaired um and they have different language for depending on 
how bad your sight is. Um, they have one that says severely sight impaired. Um, and depending on that wording depends on the type of help and support you can get with your your white card as it is now. Um, so like if your white card, se card says severely sight impaired then you're entitled to get a discount on your TV license. But if it just says sight impaired, then you're not, <laughs> you know? So it, it's that wording that gets you sometimes. Um, but yeah, so, and I did inquire about the physical disabilities card, but they were very vague with me and didn't really give me any information on that they just sort of like said we're not sure what's happened with that we think they've made it a separate thing or whatever so I tried to find more out about it and, and can't find any information so I think they may have done away with the physical disabilities card um which isn't very helpful but yeah so if you have this white card from the sensory team you can use that alone solely to get yourself the um bus pass which i'm gonna hide important information on it again um or try to try to there we go it kind of looks a bit like that um, I'm hiding my important information. You can see that horrible photo of me. Like, the worst photo ever. It's like, horrid. I hate having my photo taken by, um, by strangers. And of course, the orange, the orange, um, line on the end of the card, that means it's a disabled person's bus pass. Um, they have different colours depending on what the bus pass is for. Um, I believe an elderly person's bus pass, I believe it might be a blue stripe. Could be wrong about that, I think it's a blue stripe. Um, yeah, and then of course you have um, like the different logos and um, like the the rose logo in the top corner there um i've got to remember what that meant now and uh, that was it i think that means you can use it all over hampshire there's a hampshire one um so my bus pass i can use all over hampshire so i can go from southampton to winchester on it or i can go from southampton to london or you know, I as long as it's in within Hampshire boundaries, I can go there. So I can't get a bus to Scotland. I don't know if there is a bus that goes to Scotland, um, but you never know. I might have to get several buses to get to Scotland. I don't know, <laughs> but but yeah, I can't cross over into Scotland on this bus pass. Um, because Scotland is not part of Hampshire um, so you know and I can't cross over into Wales with it either um, so as long as it's within the Hampshire boundaries I can get a bus there for free on this bus pass um, so yeah um, so you need that white card if you do not have the white card then you will need a letter from your doctor or uh, a, an award letter for PIP and ignore them if they say oh you need the high rate you do not need the high rate you just need to be in receipt of disability benefits such as PIP or DLA um, so take your award letter show them that that's all you need um, Ignore them if they say you need high rate because you do not. They lied to me a lot about that, kept fobbing, fobbing me off with that. You need high rate, you need high rate. Um, you do not. 
okay so um so yeah so today i need to go renew this bus pass but i also need to uh get the um carers logo one which i believe is a blue dot there's a blue a blue circle light blue circle on it i believe it could be wrong could be a different color or a different shape or is it a triangle we shall find out um but yeah you get an extra little logo on there to say that it is a carer's pass and that means you can get your car carer on the bus with you for free um now they only award this if you are you or your partner or your carer is in receipt of carer's allowance um which my partner is so we've got to take his carer's allowance award letter with us and that should be enough and then obviously i'm taking all my paperwork that i need so my my disability benefit award letters my um white card uh which should be enough um and they already have me on record on the um bus pass system so they should be able to just reissue me a bus pass with the extra added logo on it um so yeah it i'm hoping it'll be that easy but but the thing is, you go in there thinking, yeah, it's going to be easy. I'll just show them this. I've got all the correct info. I'll just show them this and I'll, they'll, they'll sort it out. But no, you, it depends on who who you speak to. And it depends on what information they know of it. You know, um, because they could tell you the complete wrong information. Um, you know. And yeah um so yeah i think that is everything um so yeah if you have not got in touch with southampton sanctuary services yet do that if you need to um if you have sensory issues obviously um if you're disabled and you don't know already, you can get in touch with social services. Uh, they have a disability team. They can help you out, give you help and support where you need it. Um, yeah, do that. Um, because that is the problem with these kinds of things. They're not advertised, you know, they're not they don't tell disabled people about it i was never told about it i had to find out from other disabled people um via the internet that this kind of thing existed you know um and these people i spoke to on the internet with disabilities also said they had the issue of finding this information out because they do not tell people what support they're entitled to they do not tell people what benefits they're entitled to they they will not give you that information you know um even though they know you're entitled to it and you need that help they they still won't give it to you because they don't want to pay out for that you know um and yeah so you are entitled to this stuff if you're disabled ring them speak to them um yeah i know i've got to finish doing my hair yeah i have my hair cut recently as you may may see i did want to go to an actual hairdresser's i've been wanting to do that for ages but i, I seem to bottle it every time I seem to wimp out every time because I don't like strangers touching me. 
and of course a hairdresser is a stranger to me and yeah I don't like people touching me I mean the cutting of the hair I don't mind like <clears throat> I know a lot of um autistic people don't like the feeling of the hair being shaved it it causes them pain, physical pain, um, because of the amount of sensory input, like the noise of the shaver, the feeling of the shaver going over your hair. Um, and I don't know if, if it's the same for everyone, but for me and my sensory issues, where it comes to autism, my senses are heightened and I'm more sensitive to to different things to senses um and i can actually feel each strand of hair being cut um when the shaver goes over it i can actually feel it um not just the shaver running over my scalp but i can feel each hair being cut um and for me, I enjoy that feeling. I, I find it quite relax relaxing. And that's probably weird, but like, I find it relaxing. But there are autistic people out there who do not, who feel that, but do not find it relaxing. They, it, they find it horrifying. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I don't like strangers touching me. Um, so, so I always go, yeah, I'm going to go to the hairdressers. I'll get my hair done properly at the hairdressers. I'll get them to cut it and colour it and whatnot. But then last second I wimp out. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you do it, John. And I give him the shaver. And, and he's, he's done a good job, actually. It's not too bad. He's done quite well. Um... And to be honest, I'm not worried about it being perfectly neat and and whatnot. Because with my hair, it's more more about comfort and manageability rather than style and stuff, you know. Um, because with my disability, I used to have really long hair. Um like when i remember when i was a little kid it was down past my bum you know and it was like frizzy and curly and had a life of its own um yeah and it was just really difficult to manage um and now i'm older and my disabilities got worse and i struggle um holding my hands my arms above my head or over my head i struggle holding my arms up for any length of time so and when you have long hair you have to do that a lot when brushing and it's exhausting um and with long hair i found when i was brushing it i kept damaging my wrist and dislocating my wrist um, so yeah, it, like having it short, much easier to deal with because I just quickly brush it, spray some some frizz control stuff in it. This is um, an oil mist made from hemp and aloe vera. So yeah, this is really good by the way. That's the brand. Um, makes my hair really soft and shiny, and keeps it under control. Um, I try. I don't. I try not to put too much product in my hair because I have sensitive scalp, and it ends up making my head itch if I have too many products in there. So I just try to keep it shampoo, conditioner, and then the frizz spray. And that's that. Um, so, yeah, like, and as well, 
in the summer when the weather gets warmer I tend to sweat a lot and it's disgusting and when you have a big mop of hair and you sweat a lot like I do in the summer it tends to pull around the back of my neck and the back of my ears and it gets all sticky and uh, just feels disgusting so shave that lot off so sweat cannot sit in my hair and gross me out um and it can't make my my scalp itch um so yeah like it's much easier having the short hair and the sides and the back shaved because then i've just got to quickly brush this bit done you know um i will be dying it in a couple of days when my dye arrives um so yeah i'm probably gonna do a video about that because like i always seem to dye my hair and do different colors and yeah i might have fun and do a video showing you how i do that um so i'm not going to tell you what colors i'm gonna dye it yet you can see in the video um when i do the video in a, in a couple of days so yeah um keep an eye out for that because i've got to cover up these grays and these whites there's a lot of gray and white in there you know and it, it's horrid it's horrifying i'm starting to look old i don't want to look old i don't want to look like an adult adults are yucky who wants to be an adult Ugh. um so yeah <laughs> no offense to any adults i'm sure you're fine but you're yucky i'm sure you know you're yucky I'm sorry adults but you are you're ugh. Ugh. take everything too seriously you don't watch cartoons anymore i mean why why would you not want to watch cartoons that's just crazy um you don't want to play video games yeah you know just yeah adults yucky um <laughs> i'm joking you're fine um so yeah i'm i'm gonna finish getting ready i've got to get john out of bed and get him ready yeah so thanks for watching i will put the links for southampton sensory service team and also southampton um adult social services or social services disability team because they do help and support children as well they have a children's one and an adult one um i will put all the links for that on the chronically suki facebook page um so yeah go check that out um yeah thanks for watching i shall see you later bye